So my analysis today will involve describing indicative property and describing what was analysed. I'll be discussing some of the background and issues to be considered while conducting some of this analysis. And I'll also list the uh, assumptions and strength of data we're using. I'm going to be tr try to be as honest as possible to outline what data we've used and why this data is important and why it's um, relevant to this local area. So I'll present what the Gray's property outcome is and also the de-stocked property outcome and discuss what the difference is between those two. And at the end of the talk I'll compile those components to the, so we can compare between the Gray's and the de-stocked property. So the property I'm using an example today is a Mitchell Grass property and I've had input from Errol Entrican and David Phelps to actually design this property and David drew on the um, Northern Grazing Systems project which MLA has been funding and some of you may be involved in generating the data that went into that so um, hopefully the property is relevant to the local area. And the property we're looking at is 14,000 hectares which is about 34,000 acres and it's stocked at 8 hectares per cattle, cattle adult equivalent, which is a 450 kg adult beast. So we bring it to um, a standardised beast so we can actually compare um, what the impact is from calves and through to larger animals. So the current capacity of this property is 1,750 adult equivalents. We assume that the property has a 15% cover of timber with Gigi and so 5% is uh, Gigi regrowth and the rest is just wooded downs country. And I think this is fairly close to a local region as the slats data has uh, shown that there's about 14.5% timber cover in the Mitchell Grass Fire region. And using some information from David Phelps again, assess, use the average land condition from an assessment they did across the region. So 20% of the land is in A condition, 40% in B condition, 30% in C condition, and 5% in D condition. So that's the background property we're using. I've also looked at the stocks and emissions on this we assess, include livestock methane, looking at property methane, property energy emissions, livestock biomass and turnoff, forage and litter biomass, savannah burning the tree biomass, and finally the soil carbon and soil emissions. So Ed spoke to you a lot this morning about the um, methane uh, cycles and the methane emissions from cattle and some of the interests around um, that data. We've used um, Ed's value of 1.5 tonnes of carbon dioxide equivalent per adult equivalent per year. So that's the data we use and that's different from the uh, these factors that are used within by the Department of Climate Change and some of their other calculations but this data is relevant to Queensland uh, forage systems. So if you multiply the number of adult equivalents by 1.5 it comes up to 2,625 tonnes of carbon dioxide equivalents per year. So that's what's emitted just from the methane emissions on the Gray's property and that would change proportional to cattle numbers. Of course, on a destock property, there would be no cattle emissions. So, um, as Ed's talked about, methane emissions are quite significant and large so, and need to be addressed as part of the uh, property greenhouse budget. If we move on to property energy emissions, so this includes your fuel use, burning diesel, petrol, electricity, even though electricity um, emissions are generated off-site, they're attributed to um, the business, and also liquid petroleum gas, which is not necessarily an issue in beef industry so much. And we've done some surveys in um, some central Queensland properties and Ag Force is involved in doing some of these surveys and some of you might have contributed to the Ag Force survey out around this region. But from that it shows that 0.009 tonnes of carbon dioxide has been emitted per hectare and that's on the central Queensland property. Um, you can probably argue whether western Queensland properties are higher or lower energy efficiency than that. Um, but that's the number of views at this stage. So if you multiply that by the number of hectares, it's 126 tonnes of carbon dioxide equivalents being emitted. One um, thing with the agriculture businesses are, it's quite unique from other businesses, is that the um, 
workers and residents actually housed on the property. And um, so you can argue whether the residents should be included or not, whereas if you're a teacher or work in the mining industry, all the workers' residences aren't included in their emissions. Um, using an average Queensland household, they emit about 12 tonnes. So if you assume one residence per property, you can subtract a little bit off that. And I'm assuming there's no clearing emissions in this analysis. If you go to destock the property, and this is where it becomes a lot of conjecture what's actually going to happen if you destock a property. Uh, we're going to turn off all the water pumps and uh, close off water points. Are you still going to have someone living on the property or are they going to move to somewhere else? And um, what's the energy associated with the management of um, those sort of properties, whether it's um, someone has to drive in every couple of weeks or something to check on things, or and what are they going to do for fire control? Are they going to do fire control? For this analysis, I've just assumed that um, you're still going to have about a quarter of the grazing property's energy emissions associated with the management of that destock property. So there's a bit of a difference there, about 100 tonnes of carbon dioxide. So that's still quite a different number from the 2000, um, so we were talking about earlier, with the methane. Next area I'm looking at is the livestock biomass. And um, so a lot of land I was uh, interested in, uh, what's the weight of the cattle, what's the carbon locked up in my cattle, because they wouldn't be there if it was destocked. So you can multiply it out of a 455 kilo animal by 40% dry mass, which is a length uh, animal condition score of five. Some of you might know what that means. Um, and of that dry mass, about 50, I've assumed there's about 50% of carbon in that, which um, there's not a real lot of data on that. I've just used the same as what it is for vegetation and other organic um, compounds. And so your livestock are going to have about 580 tonnes of biomass just walking around in your livestock. If you then look at um, the product you're producing from your property, you're exporting it for someone else to use, so it's a bit like your fuel supplier selling you the fuel to use on your property and you're actually responsible for the emission from burning um, that fuel. If you look at the beef um, product as a, in that sort of terms, you're actually exporting about 200 tonnes of carbon dioxide equivalents each year, and that's assuming about a 35% um, turn off for that old equivalence and that's going to depend on region to region, I expect it to be a fair bit lower in Cape York. And if you're de-stocked of course you don't have that carbon stock or that export of carbon in this analysis. I'll now move on to looking at the forage and litter biomass. So in the grazed um, property, so this is a long term average, um, grass goes up and down, I assume there's a better 1.5 tonnes of grass per hectare. So you might say I'm higher or lower than that. And I've also um, estimated the tonnes of litter lying on the ground. And some of the work I did out at Strathdar um, showed that about 70%, litter was about 70% of the actual grass we were able to clip off Mitchell grass. So I've used a 70% value. So when you multiply that across the property, it ends up at 65,000 tonnes of carbon dioxide equivalents just in the grass. If you destock that property, and again, it comes down to con pretty conjecture what the response is going to be. And um, if you assume there's little water, so little roos, you expect to be a higher grass biomass when you lock it up. So I've assumed there's two and a half tonnes of grass in the locked up place, which is averaging over time. So it'll go up and down, but that's about average. So they'll have, in that case, it'll be about um, 110,000 tonnes of carbon dioxide just in the grass. So just from the change in grass biomass, there is quite a difference in the amount of carbon locked up um, in the destock property. So flowing through to that, we'll now look at the savannah burning emissions. So in Northern Territory, they've done quite a lot of work looking at what the um, emissions factors are and how you calculate emissions factors, and this is part of the um, methodology that the Department of Climate Change use. 